Welcome back to Brutal Mode EX Plus. This is part 6 of the Brutal Mode EX Plus mod, the mod that makes the game much harder. I suggest you watch the previous parts first, since most things are changed. Today, we are starting on the 7th world? Yes, the journey is still not over, as this world was added on its latest version 1.2.4, introducing several balance and aesthetic changes and bug fixes. World 7 changes the rules of the entire game, introducing exclusive variants that make it the toughest world. You start with 200 sun instead of 150, so you know it's gotta be terrible. So, for level 7-1, we are in Zen Garden, but you need flower pots to plant anything else, and you start with none of them. Yep, none. This means even more micromanaging to position your flower pots. You literally do not have enough flower pots to get past the early game, or you'll have to sacrifice on some of the sun production. So, Doom Shroom seems pretty essential for this level. Alongside this, amongst the first changes from before is the Starfruit nerf. It no longer pierces through the flat roof section and also fires at a slower rate than before. The Pole Vaulter now also has a new variant exclusive to World 7, the Wildlife Crossing variant. When it jumps, it does this. Instead of leaping over only one tile, it jumps two tiles now, allowing them to more easily infiltrate our defenses. It still makes a gravestone on the tile behind where it lands. And for obvious reasons, you can clearly see that we are struggling a lot by the fact we had to spend two Doom Shrooms before the first flag even came. Oh, but if you thought that was bad... <coughs> yep, five bucketed flag zombies. In World 7, every flag will spawn a bucketed flag zombie on every row and they each drain sun as well, making you lose 5 times more sun than usual. Naturally, when you have an impossible early game paired with some zombie with an impossible amount of health to kill, we say hello to the dump strat yet again. To get enough sun to plant sufficient plants for our survival past the first lag, the dump strategy makes use of sacrificing 4 lawnmowers early on and garlics to protect rows of sunflowers. Unfortunately, there's one thing I forgot to account for when I used the same strategy again. Pole vaulters can leap over garlics, creating a grave in its spot and rendering it utterly useless. This makes our garlics more expensive to maintain, but daytime makes that less of a trouble. Doom shrooms fall asleep during day, allowing us to stock them up. But of course, now costs an extra slot because of coffee bean. Overall, it's a benefit because we can use more of them. Make sure you can afford Coffee Bean when the Flag Zombies come in to kill them as fast as possible with a Doom Shroom to prevent your sun draining. Flag Zombies also have more health and deal more damage, so it survives a Doom Shroom too. So thank god it's daytime because we need to immediately Doom Shroom again to kill them. As for the rest of the level, Ladder Zombies are the main threat aside from Pole Vaulters, jumping over garlics. They are immune to slowdown from Blover, and the Shovel Zombie also requires an immediate answer if it comes from one of your Sunflower Rows. You can stall it out using an Ice Shroom and a Doom Shroom later, but you will most definitely lose at least a few Sunflowers because of the delay from Coffee Bean. Sure enough, Cherry Bomb is a better answer to not lose Sunflowers, but you need it more for emergency situations like target zombies absolutely steamrolling your defenses. And there's also another question of whether you should even use Cherry Bomb because the extra upkeep in Garlics really bites you when you see you don't have as much sun to work with towards the end of the level. And to beat the final wave, you also need enough sun to plant two Doom Shrooms and two Coffee Beans. And you need the sun before it even comes because it will get drained instantly. Unfortunately, not even Doom Shroom Spam can save us very easily this time around. And even if you have enough sun, time might not be on your side since that second Doom Shroom is also necessary to be pre-planted before the final wave comes. How to achieve exactly that while surviving against the onslaught of zombies before the second flag is certainly a question that we will have to answer ourselves. I tried sacrificing Ice Shroom in exchange for Twin Sunflower to get more sun. That did not go in our favor, because you then end up losing to ladder zombies without sufficient solid. And playing this level was certainly not without mishaps that I still make even after playing so much of Brutal Mode EX+.
So, is there one true solution to this level? Yes, that is the one where you don't need to do shrooms. Instead of using Ice Room, Potato Mine is our saving grace here. We use Potato Mine as an additional squash to counter stray ladder zombies, so we don't lose to them even without Ice Room. The trick is, Doom Shroom with one shot all the zombies in the final wave, except the flag zombies. Then, we use Cherry Bombs to kill three more, Squash, and Potato Mine for the final two. You only need all of those plants off cooldown to beat the final wave, easily winning, given you didn't screw up the instant spam mid-level. An easy win, as I say, it only took 80 minutes. As for level 7-2... Oh no! Zombonies and a new variant of the newspaper zombie. Surely this wouldn't go terribly wrong at all, right? If you thought the previous level was already bad, this level took more than 25 attempts, about 2 hours to solve. First of all, newspaper zombies are back and as stupid as they ever were. Let one get through and oops, you lose the game because it kills half your some producers. And second of which, the new newspaper zombie variant causes an issue with us using starfruit. Just take a look at what it does after its newspaper is broken. Yes, it survived an entire tallnut and then also survived the potato mine. And no, it has nothing to do with the gramophone zombie next to it. The almanac zombie increases in 15 health every time its almanac is damaged. Unfortunately, Starfruit does damage and takes off one hit point because of its piercing mechanic. The almanac has 300 health, meaning the base zombie has an additional health of 300 times 15 equals to 4500, equivalent to 3 instant kills. To circumvent this health adding issue, Chompers eat the Almanac Zombie whole before its angry face, so it serves as the perfect counter. Or is it? It really isn't once you look at how many zombies get sent at you. Choppers are severely outnumbered for how expensive they are. Really doesn't help us much here, does it? An elegant solution is Scaredy Shroom and Walnut Spam to block off the zombies and give our Choppers ample time to get back in shape to devour more zombies. This works perfectly until the first flag, which, the problem isn't with the Buckethead zombies this time because Choppers also one-shot them, but the zombie density is too high, so the Horde just plows right through your defense, and you ain't winning against this. So what if we use Pumpkin instead? It's actually very nice against the Horde of zombies, because now we have them to explode off the swarms of zombies. Unfortunately, that does not account for the fact that Newspaper Zombie hence will break loose if they get exploded before their angry phase, and therefore lose you the game. I then tried Fume Troom to fend out the Horde. Tallnuts were used to instead to blockade Newspaper Zombies this time because we are using Fume Troom. It actually worked out pretty well, until Zomboni started coming and freezing up our Chompers. Eventually, the strategy was a failure because Zombonis wreak havoc on close ranged plants. We are simply trapped in a dilemma. If we choose to use Splash Damage plants, they simply don't do enough damage against Zombonis for us to ever reliably kill them in time. If we choose to not use Splash Damage plants, we can't beat the swarm that is off the first flag. Oh boy, <laughs> this is going to be so bad. Eventually, we have to come back looking for help from our lord and savior Doom Shroom once again. But hold on, how are you going to get enough Doom Shrooms to kill all the Zombonis? The strategy changes that we have to use for the early game. Instead of using masses of potato mines and squashes or Doom Shrooms, we have to simply stall. 
to stall, all we're really doing is just playing out garlics to force zombies into rows and then blowing them back with Blover until they die. This is absolutely important because you don't want Almanac zombies to bite into tall nuts, which increases their base zombie's health. I also brought in Chomper, which is actually very important because it's a fast recharge plant that can kill Letterheads without activating the newspaper zombies rage mode. With sufficient stalling, the two Doomshrooms on the first flag will kill all the newspaper zombies from before. This also saves using Doomshroom by not using a single one before the first flag. Maximize your Doomshroom value by Doomshrooming a bit after the flag zombies appear so you can meet the next wave threshold to get the next wave spawn as soon as possible. That way, your second Doomshroom can hit another wave of Zombonis and you waste less Doomshrooms given how limited they are. If a wave doesn't have any Zombonis, then do not spend your Doomshroom and simply spam Blover to stall newspaper zombies out. A Zomboni coming in any of your Sunflower lanes is also easily counterable, since Chompers have just enough time to eat a Zomboni whole before it gets frozen. If a wave has only one Zomboni, then you can get away by just using Jalapeno. If the wave after also has Zombonis, or more than one Zomboni, spend Doomshroom to kill them. With all this planning and efficient use of instant kills, you should save enough Doom Shrooms to kill the final wave and beat the level. Seven three, we are now in the Aquatic Garden. What on earth is this balloon zombie variant here? As we load into the level, you can see it's nighttime as mushrooms aren't asleep and the three middle rows of water. With only two ground lanes, the letterhead zombies in the early game meant ground lanes were just completely guaranteed to have no lawnmowers remaining. When we're trying to defend using Fume Shroom, we simply cannot do enough damage against letterheads and quite easily lose to them without spending an instant kill on them. I changed up my strategy to be better equipped against letterheads. Using some flowers instead of sun shrooms made more sense since we already had 200 sun to begin with. I tried using Gar like this level since the ground lanes are next to no other ground lanes. You end up getting zombies slowed down by constantly biting garlic. What's more interesting is... Garlics have an extremely low chance to hypnotize zombies when bitten. Normally, this chance is near irrelevant. But here, we can make zombies indefinitely chew the garlic until hypnotized. The perfect scenario is this, a hypnotized buckethead will stop the letterhead in its tracks, giving us time to prepare for their infiltration. Unfortunately, a squash was still needed because of the pumpkin zombie in the row next door. I was going to use blowers to pop the balloons off balloon zombies, but the flag zombies came so I had zero sun against them now. So let's just use our lawnmowers if we have them. Okay, it appears that this was our first time losing to Balloon Zombies in Bruno Mode X+. Balloon Zombies are immune to lawnmowers now, unlike in vanilla. I'm not quite sure why I forgot to bring in Cattail despite it being very overtuned in this mod. As I can remind you, they have a 3% chance to shoot shots that deal 10 times more damage than usual. A Gargantuar actually spawned in the water because a target zombie can summon a bungee ambush for any zombie, even in the water lane. However, something else interesting happened. The Imp now also has a variant that appears one third of the time. It has significantly more health, as much as a bucket or screen door has. It also instantly crushes any plant it touches. Without a Doom Shroom to spare after being forced to use it against the target zombie, this is just a loss. If you thought that target zombie was bad, there's also a really bad sequence this attempt. First of which, our Tangle Kelp and Doom Shroom are on cooldown, so we end up having no answer to this Lilypad Snorkel Zombie, and unfortunately, that's just a Force Pool Cleaner. Then, two bungee ambushes occur one after another, with the second one spawning a... In World 7, Football Zombies also have an extra strong new variant. The Giga Football Zombie has 5,300 health, almost as much as a Giga Gargantuar. They also receive 40% less damage whenever not eating a plant, but receive 25% more whenever eating. Without blocking it with plants, it has an equivalent health of 8,833. That amount of health survives 4 instant kills and requires 5 to be killed. So, it makes a lot of sense that we did not stand a chance against this zombie here. After several fails, I refined the strategy a bit more. By refining, I mean, I just copied the instant kill spam strategy again, but included some aquatic plants. 
instead of sacrificing lawmores of garlics, we obviously can't use garlic. So Cattail acts as both balloon defense and early game protection against stray zombies. We don't want Plantern here since Cattails are merely for the early game and balloon zombies. Hence, Cherry Bomb is better here to counter the bucket of flag zombies. Just Cattail is enough for the balloon zombie variant. The Cloud Zombie, instead of dropping down after being attacked by spikes, stays in the air and tanks for more hits than usual. Tango Kelp is pretty mandatory to kill Lilypad Snorkel zombies in my books. Just put them behind tall nuts to stock up Tango Kelps and ensure safety in all water lanes. And for the rest of the game, simply Doom Shroom will eliminate half the waves on its own. To clean up Bucketed Flag zombies post Doom Shroom, Cattails will do that work for us. As for Jalapeno zombies, they're the worst in this level because of their insanely high hit points. Half of the Jalapeno zombies won't be clipped in the Doom Shroom explosions. This is where Cherry Bomb, Squash, and Potato Mine come in and fill in those gaps to try and limit the damage they can do. If there are any more other threats, Glover should simply buy us enough time to get one of your instant kills back. Save a Doom Shroom for the final wave, and that concludes this level pretty easily without much more hassle. If you are asking how there are vases here, I'll explain more in the future. Level 7 4. We're still in the Aquatic Garden, this time with Gargantuars, Screen Door Zombies, Dolphin Riders, and Gatling P Zombies. The loadout I decided to go with is the exact same loadout as the level previous. It really is just unfortunately necessary to run 4 instant kill plants in your loadout. The early game, the exact same. The mid game, you just do the whole same thing again with Doom Shroom spamming every other wave and blow back frets. This time, we're using our instant kills, the cherry bombs, potato mines, squashes, and tangle kelps to eliminate Gatling P zombies. They do a ton of damage against our tall nuts, so we need them dead as soon as possible so we don't lose our tall nuts too quickly as they don't recharge quite fast enough to replenish. The whole board will get infested with Gatling P zombies after the second flag, and lots of mass destruction after our tall nut gets broken. Hopefully, the sun you got before that point should be enough to suffice for the rest of the instant kills you need to spend, especially that Doom Shroom on the final wave. I don't see how else you're ever killing the bucket of flag zombies, because no plant in existence does enough damage to deal with these absolutely large hordes of zombies. That about wraps up today's episode of Brutal Mode EX+. The Brutal Mode Extended Universe series will be taking an extra week break, so in two weeks time, there won't be a Brutal Mode video, but instead, I'll be uploading an unmodded PvZ1 challenge that I'm very excited to show you guys. Remember to subscribe and stay tuned, and thank you to our channel members for supporting the RCCH channel. For now, have a great day and I'll see you all next time.